Good day, my name is Kobi Saifa and welcome to my channel. In this lesson, we will build a fixed deposit calculator using HTML, CSS, and of course JavaScript. As you can see, I have gone ahead to build the UI of our project. And so if you have a similar if you want to have a similar UI, I would advise that you pause the video and then type the code we have here. This is for the HTML, this is for the CSS. Let me slowly walk you through it. You can pause the video and type it at your own pace. So this is for the CSS, and then we have the JavaScript file over here. Now, this is the structure of our project. We have an image for the background, and then these are the various files. I have also linked them up in the HTML, as you can see over here. Okay, focus. The focus in this video is not on HTML, neither is it on CSS. Our focus here is on JavaScript, and so we'll be working mostly in the script file. If you are ready, let's get to work. Now, before jumping into coding, this is what we'll be doing. What we we'll do is that we will capture the input values from the form elements, the form you saw in the HTML. Next, we have to validate those input values, and then you perform the calculation, and then of course, finally you will display the results. Okay, so let's get to it. We will create a function, and then let's call it calculate maturity. If I can spell it, and then you target those input values. Okay, so what we we'll do is that we have those input values as you saw over there. We have the, the principal, the interest rate, the tenor, and then the result. And so we we'll target those input values. And so let's give them appropriate variable names. We call it principal input. Okay, and then document. We we'll go into the document. When I say document, I mean this. Dot get element. We we'll call this method. What ID are we getting? The principal, if you remember. We have a lot of IDs here, but we are targeting this, the first one, the principal. Okay, next, we need to target the other ones. So what I'll do is that I'll just copy and paste these ones, change the names. Next, we have to do is the interest rate. If I can spell it, interest rate input, and then the interest, interest rates. Okay, next, we have the tenor, the tenor input, and then this is the tenor. I can spell it and then lastly we have the results just name it as result input and then this is the result awesome next we have to create some variables and so principal the principal sorry and then we have to make sure that whatever the user is typing we pass it as a float we are dealing with money over here and so we need a float we need floating values okay so of course if you want int that's up to you then we get the, um, the values from whatever the user is typing in. So the principal input dot value, I think it's supposed to be V. Value, awesome. We do the same thing for the interest rate and then the tenor. And so what I'll do is that I'll just, once again, copy this, paste, change, whatever I'm supposed to change. And so we have interest rates, and then we change this to interest rates, this one. Sorry, sorry. Let me just undo. Okay, this one. Okay, then next we just copy again. We paste. Next, what we have to do is the tenor. So I'll just copy this. And then tenor inputs. Awesome. So these are the variables we'll be working with. The next thing you have to do is to validate those input fields. And so let me just put a comment here. Validate input. And then, of course, to validate the input, we need to make decisions. By decisions, I mean the if else statement. And so if we make sure it's a number, if it's not a number, what's not a number? The first one, which is the principal. And then the next one is the is not a number. Which one is that? Is the interest rate. We have them over here. This ones. I mean these ones. The next is so there's the pipe, the two pipe we see is all. If you know about JavaScript, if you not, then please refresh or get the documentation and then go through it. The tenor, you make sure that whatever you are typing is a number. If it's not a number, of course, what do you do? You tell the user that what you are typing is not a number. We expect a number. So result output, let's say dot inner. What is it? I thought they would give it to me. Inner test. Wow. I want to type all this thing. So please enter if i can spell enter enter a valid or let's say since we have more than one so valid numbers 
Wow, my spelling is failing me this evening. In all fields. Okay. That's awesome. So what do you do after? You return. What do you return? Nothing. Those of you who like semicolon, you can be adding semicolon at the end. It will work regardless. So I'll leave it. I think I need to correct this. Then the next thing we have to do is the we also have to check, make sure that the numbers they are typing is greater than zero. It's not equal to or it's not less than zero. And so it's part of the validation. So what we we'll do is that we will say the principal. Oh, I think let me just be copying and pasting principal or the interest, the interest rates. Or the the tenor. What do we do? Of course, we need to tell the user something. What do you have to tell the user? Let's see results. Let me just copy this to avoid all these unnecessary mistakes I'm making. Okay. And so the appropriate message we need to tell the user will be to please enter. How do I even clean the enter? My goodness. Enter, uh, what do we tell the user? Let's say positive, positive numbers in all fields. I think this makes sense. Okay, that is it. So that is it, that is it for, sorry, that is for the validations. This will help us validate the input fields. Next, we have to perform the calculation. This is where all the action will be. And then, so how do we go about that? We need to create a variable, let's call it maturity. I can spell maturity, let's say maturity amount, and then equal to the principal plus, of course, we need to do some multiplication over here. And so what we'll do is that we have the principal again multiplied by the interest rates. This is just a formula. Multiply the tenor. Of course, all divided by all hundred percent. This is nothing strange. It's just a formula that you can even check online. Okay, that's it. No hundred, not hundred percent. Okay, okay, that is it. And so this is what we have now. This will help us with the calculation. After that, what do you do? What you have to do that is, oh, sorry, what you have to do next is to display the results to the user. Okay, let's go. So just add a comment. Say display the final results to the user how do you go about it you will just say result output dot what are you calling on is inner test inner test is equal to let's say maturity amount if i can spell maturity ty amount is is what nothing special our variables there we have the maturity amount this one over here Let's just copy to avoid any mistakes. Dots, of course. If you want to, you can convert it to two decimal places. I prefer it that way. If you don't want to, just leave it. It's not a must. Okay, so that is it. That's what we have over there. Then the last thing we have to do is to attach the attach the event listener to the to the button. This button. Attach an event listener to this button. So attach, if I can spell attach. An event, wow, listener to the button. Okay, and so document dot get element by ID. What is the ID? Calculate button. If you go back to the HTML page, you can see it over there. This one, calculate button. And so calculate, I should have even copied it. BTN dot add events. Let me just check. No, it's outside rather, not here. Add event list. Now, what event are we adding? It's a click event. Awesome. And then we we invoke the function. What function over there? This function over here. There, this one. We call this function. So that is it. Okay. This will do the work. That is it. That's all you need. Okay, so we will test it out pretty soon. Let me just go over the code and see. I have captured everything that I need to capture. Okay, okay. So I think we should, since this is the result, we should change the name to result output rather. Yeah, I think this should be the appropriate name. 
Okay, okay. Now what else? What else? What else are we missing? Um, what is this? Treaty amount. That's what I'm having here. So what's the issue now? What's the issue now. Why is it not? Why is it grayed out? Uh, is there anything we are doing wrong? I don't think so. Okay. So why is the tenor input goes to grade out? Um, this is the tenor, so it should be tenor input with value. Okay. Okay, awesome. Let's save everything. Go back to the web. Refresh. Awesome. Awesome. So let's see. Let's test it out. Okay. Okay. Enter valid numbers in offers. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let's enter something here. Uh, just any number, random number. At interest rate of, let's say, 11%. And then a tenor of three years. Let's calculate and see. Okay, yes, we need to do something about this. We are supposed to see the actual number here, not this test over here. And so we need to go back to the what do you call it? Our our script and then check what is wrong. Okay, so looking at the code. Uh oh, my bad. Sorry, sorry, it's my fault. I think not what we need here is back tick. Yes, that's why it was grayed out. Back tick. Okay, so that is it. So we refresh again. We save, we refresh, and then we check it out. Okay, so I have refreshed the page. We enter the values again. This time around, I'll change it. 10%, two years. Calculate. Awesome. There we have it. There we have it. Of course, you can do the manual calculation and check it out. There we have it. Awesome. We can always update it. Percentage of 12, interest rate is 12, and then for three years, you calculate, and then this is what you have. And so that is it. That is how you build an application using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to calculate interest on a fixed deposit for a specified duration. If you enjoyed the video, kindly like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, stay safe.